Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I am re so excited about talking about this topic. It's something that I'm really passionate about, and I think it's really important for people with chronic, invisible illnesses, chronic illness, visible illnesses, autoimmune diseases, even healthy people need to learn how to advocate for themselves. And you usually don't have to figure it out until you're in the middle of a, of a health situation. So a little bit about me. I, my name is Holly and I've had ulcerative colitis for over 12 years now. I was diagnosed in 2008 when I was home freshman or summer after my freshman year of college. I woke up one morning on Memorial Day with an upset stomach and didn't eat anything for the next 14 days until they figured out what was wrong with me, which was ultimately ulcerative colitis. So I didn't have to, for the first few years of my diagnosis, I didn't need to know how to advocate for myself. My, I lived at home or I lived at home in the summer. I went to school 45 minutes away from home and my mom was a nurse at the local hospital. So she was my number one advocate, which I am forever grateful for because as a 19 year old with an autoimmune disease, I had no idea like what the hell was going on. Like I didn't know what ulcerative colitis meant. I didn't know what gut health was. I didn't know anything. And she honestly took care of me. She was my advocate. I mean, she, in the hospital, she made sure that I was hospitalized and given the care that I needed and that I was put on the floor that she worked on so that all the nurses knew me. I was like the frequent fly flyer. I was like considered the princess of Six North. <laughs> which I don't know, no one needs the badge of princess of six North, like no one. But if you're going to be in the hospital, like you get the best jello. If you know, if you're the nurse's daughter, like, let's just be honest. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the ice cream could be better. Anyway, stick to the jello. But she like was there around the clock for me, made sure that the nursing students were not the ones that drew blood at 5 a.m. on their rounds because I had such tiny veins. Like she made sure that the best doctor was there to talk to me. She made sure that I got the best treatment. And I really just kind of sat there and like took in all of the treatment because I was so overwhelmed I couldn't do it for myself. And one thing to note, do not mess with Southern women and their babies. I'm originally from South Carolina. So, hey Danish, I am originally from South Carolina and Southern women and their children, you just don't mess with them. So nurse on top of that. So I had an advocate on my side and I really didn't know what it meant to advocate for myself until I studied abroad in Spain. And this was the first time I advocated for myself because I was sitting in my gastroenterologist's office saying, I am 20 years old. If I want to study abroad in Spain, then I'm gonna do that. And my doctor was pro-travel, he loved travel, and he was like, oh yeah, sure, we can make that happen. And my mom sat there terrified. <laughs> She's like, but don't you think that she shouldn't go? And my doctor was awesome and was like, no, she can go. Um, so, so I go, I go to Spain and I just kind of sweep my disease under the rug, pretend that it doesn't even exist. I honestly, quite frequently, if anyone is on that studied abroad with me in Alicante, you know, like it is as crazy as you would have imagined. And this girl from like private school, middle of nowhere, South Carolina, just like went a little too crazy. Ate whatever I wanted, drank whatever I wanted, stayed up until 6 a.m., just treated my body like total garbage. Ended up in the hospital in Spain. So before I say I ended up in the hospital in Spain, I just want you to know that I fully deserved, <laughs> with ulcerative colitis, I deserved to be in that hospital because I treated my body so poorly. Anyway, the first time I ever had to advocate for myself, I was in a foreign country with a very minimal knowledge of Spain, Spanish at the time. No advocate of my mom. She wasn't there. Um, no one spoke English in that hospital. And I was in a hospital bed for eight days without knowing, like n no one there, like telling the doctors what I needed, what I didn't need. I had to learn how to figure out how to speak up for myself and in another language. Talk about stressful. So I 
anyway, so I figured, I figured it out and I want to say that I like, I found my voice, I spoke up and I got exactly what I wanted, but that wasn't the case. I was in total shock. I was so overwhelmed and I ended up traumatized because of it because I just couldn't speak up. And so they were just walking all over me and like not explaining things to me and just kind of assuming that I knew what was going on and that they knew what was best for me and that I didn't. So it was a really traumatic experience for me. And after that, I came home and promised myself that I would always speak up for what I needed and share with the medical staff how I was feeling and never get walked over again. Um, and I don't believe that they intended to do that. They just, they were professionals and knew what they needed to do and that I was just going to sit there and take it. And I, and that was just the miscommunication between language and also between patient and doctor. So that was my first taste in patient advocacy. So then I later, I came back home. I did go back to Spain and teach English and then eventually moved to California where I am today. <coughs> Excuse me. So I did. I didn't stay at home. I wasn't always at home, where my mom could safely treat me on her floor in the hospital with all of her friends around me and the doctors that she knows and loves. I that that was a ble complete blessing while I was in college and figuring out my disease, but that wasn't my reality. And so for the last you know seven or so years of living independently, I've had to figure out who I am as a patient. Well, not only who I am as a patient, who I am as a person, but also how to speak up for myself, how to find a doctor in a brand new state, in a brand new city, um, find and figure out a doctor that works, that works with me, that works best for what I want out of life and how I want to be treated and the treatment plan that I want. And so I just wanted to share with you today, that's a long winded explanation of my background and why patient advocacy is so important to me. Hi, Alexa. Sorry guys, feel free to say hi to me. I like interacting with people so that I, it doesn't feel like I'm talking to a screen. Um, yeah, so I have spent years and years and years of gradually figuring out what it means to to advocate for myself. Hi, Tracy. Thanks for joining. Um, and so I lost my train of thought. Um, so now I, I all that to say I am now in California with a doctor and a care team that I love, who is awesome, who like puts my needs first. She asks about my, um, she asks about what I like out of life, like what I'm like when I'm not sick and what my goals are for when I'm healthy again. Like my doctor knows that I ran a marathon and that I want to start running again. My doctor knows that I've been married for three years and want to go travel to Europe. And she mentions it on every call. Like we are going to get you back to Europe, Holly. We are going to get you back to running. Like that is what I want for all of you is a doctor and a team that cares and to have someone that listens to you. So I have a few tips while I'm on the call to share with you on how to get that relationship with the doctor and how to speak up and become your own best advocate. Because honestly, I saw this, I was doing my research and I saw this quote is that there are two, two rules of thought, which I like both. And so I'm going to say both and you can take one or leave one or take both is that you need to become the CEO of your own body. You own your body, you know what's best for it, and you need to make the decisions that are best for your body and your health. The other one, it's very similar, is that you need a PhD in, or you have a PhD in your body. Like you know intimately what your body needs, you know what it doesn't need, and no one from the outside who doesn't experience your feelings, who doesn't experience, who doesn't know your past trauma with medical or healthcare, who doesn't know the interactions that you've had with medications, they don't know that unless you tell them. And sitting there and staying silent doesn't help the doctor. It doesn't help you. It mostly doesn't help you because the doctor is going to move on to that next patient and 
unless it's written down in the chart because you told them, they're just, they're not going to know. So that's why I'm so passionate about this is because the healthcare only works as much at, well, also you need good healthcare, but the healthcare only works as much as you work with it and share your experiences. So, okay, off my soapbox just a little bit. Just so I'm going to share a few things about how to become your own best advocate, specifically with your doctor and with your care team. I was going to share how to be your own best advocate in at home with in relationships and at work, but I think I'm going to keep that for, I'm going to probably turn this into a series because there's so much to talk about. So right now I'm just going to talk about how to be your own best advocate with your care team. And then next week and the week after we're going to talk about how to be your own best advocate for your health when it comes to relationships at home and at work. Okay, great. Okay. So first, when you're looking for a doctor, find a practitioner that aligns with your goals. So I would take some time, take a notebook, pen pad, whatever, with a pen, pencil, and visualize, visualize the whole experience from the time that you book your appointment until the time you leave that office. Like, how do you want to feel? What do you, what interactions do you want to have? So when you're thinking about your dream doctor's appointment, and let's be honest, if you have a chronic illness or you've ever spent time in doctor's offices, you know what you want in that experience. So sit down, visualize for the time that you call that doctor's appointment. Like, what do you, what do you want that phone experience to be like? What do you want the booking experience to be like? When you walk in the door, what do you want the office to look like? Do you want it to be accessible for all abilities? Do you want it to, um, Do you want it to be clean? Do you want it to be welcoming? Do you want it to feel sterile and clean? Or do you want it to be more homey and welcoming? How do you want your interaction with the staff to be? Write all of this down. Then when you, like, when you walk into the doctor or when you're taken back into the room, how do you want that experience to go? Um, When you, then when you meet with the doctor, what characteristics, what what are the values and goals that you want to achieve by working with this doctor? So write all of these things down so that when you are looking for a doctor, you know the questions to ask. When you're Googling, I would recommend Googling them, looking at all the medical review sites. There's like ZocDoc and there are so many. If you just Google the doctor's name with the city that you're in, it will there will all pop up. So I would recommend looking at all of the reviews or you can just call them. Like I recommend calling them and asking the specific questions, the goals that you're looking for to see if it's a match. Maybe it's not a personality match. Or, I don't know. So I would, I recommend just doing your due diligence to when you're finding, when you're finding the practitioner. And then when you schedule the appointment, ahead of time, come prepared. So write down every single question that you want answered, every single one. There is no question too small. If you have a question about your condition or about the way that your doctor practices, if it's the first time, I would write down every single question. Then write down every symptom that you've been experiencing for the last however long. Write down all of your symptoms, the frequency, um, the pain levels. So maybe start taking a journal of each day for the few weeks leading up to the appointment about the symptoms that you're experiencing and the frequency because they're definitely going to ask and you want to be prepared. And then write down all of the medications and supplements that you've been taking. Write the, down the brand, the uh, the potency, and um, actually, if you want to go one step further, I mean, I, I do this, especially the first time, I will bring a whole bag of my actual pill bottles, of my supplements and my medications that I've been taking so that they can actually see them. Or you can take a picture of all of the sides of the bottle if you don't, if you don't wanna carry the whole bag in with, with you the way that I have in the past. Uh, I just don't want any room for confusion, so baggy pictures, write it down, Uh, just anything that you possibly want to know from this doctor, I highly recommend coming prepared because there, there is a symptom called the, uh, or what is it? It's like 
doorknob syndrome, where as soon as you open the door to the doctor's office, all those questions just like magically fly out of your head. It's like, you can't, like, I can't tell you how many times I've sat there.